This is No One Will Ever Believe You by Blue Underscore Obsidian, read by Satori Reed. Summary. This is when Izuku remembered that Todoroki was in the room with him and slowly turned around to face his classmate's shocked face, seeing Todoroki's eyes that were white as dinner plate. Using his menacing stare he had perfected over the course of several years, panicking, he said quietly, No one will ever believe you. Izuku was currently packing up the rest of his things in the homework of class 1A. It was the end of the school day, the school and rooms were mostly empty, and everyone got out at 4.10pm. The dorms had just been recently implanted, and everyone was rushing out of the school to the comfort of their rooms to rest before another day of school. The only current exceptions were him, Todoroki, and Uncle Aizawa, Todoroki who was packing up the rest of the things, and Aizawa who wasn't allowed to leave until everyone was out of the room. While Izuku had always lived on campus, so this one is exactly new to him per se, he was still excited about the dorms. Living with his classmates, cooking with them, cleaning with them, spying on them, not to mention all of the vents he could explore. As Izuku was putting his last notebook into his backpack, he heard the large door to the homeroom open. He looked up and saw nothing. He looked down and still saw nothing. Then he looked further down and saw the principal of UA, the two standing in the doorway. Izuku brightened instantly. Dad! he exclaimed, quickly picking up his backpack and throwing it over his shoulders and running over to said Dan, crouching down to be at eye level. Nezu smiled. Hello, Minnie Mouse. Has your day been well? Izuku nodded vigorously. Yeah, it's been great. I'm still really excited about the dorms. I know it's been a few days, but it's still new. I still haven't memorized the vent layout. Nezu grins at that. You can just look at the layout on the blueprints, can you not? Izuku tilted his head, getting in a way that mimicked Nezu's. But where's the fun in that? Nezu laughed at that, softly patting the curls on the greenette's head. Very true. Now, I unfortunately have paperwork to take care of, so I must sleep. Goodbye, Minnie Mouse. He waved and walked off down the halls to his office. Izuku smiled. He loved his dad. That's when Izuku remembered that Todoroki was in the room with him and slowly turned around to face his classmate's shocked face, seeing Todoroki's eyes that were as white as dinner plates. Using his menacing stare that he had perfected over the course of several years, panicking, he said quietly, No one will ever believe you. Guys, I know what I heard. Todoroki was currently speaking to Ashiro, Kaminari and Sero in the halls of UA. He was trying to tell them what he heard yesterday in the homer of 1A, but none of them believed him. Kaminari snorted. Sure, dad. And Aizawa Sensei and President Mike are married. The yellow-haired male mocked. Ashida giggled. Ha, yeah, right. Sarah so chuckled under his breath. Unbeknownst to the four of them, President Mike just happened to be passing by them, listening in, and discreetly trying to hide his wedding ring. Izuku was currently sitting in the kitchen on the kitchen island, one night up, eating some leftover food that he had just heated up. It was currently midnight, 12.02 a.m., the perfect time for snacking, in his own humble opinion. He jumped when a hand slammed down on the top of the island, and he looked up to see the multicolored hair of Todoroki Shoto. His hair was matted and messy, and his heterochromic eyes were wild, red blood vessels visible. I don't care what you or anyone else says, he breathed. I will prove to them all that you are his son. Izuku just smiled sadistically looking Todoroki in the eyes. Bang it, he dared. Guys, I am telling you, I heard him calling it to dad. Izuku heard Todoroki insist to a very tired-looking Jiro and Yaya Rozu and a very amused-looking Ashiro, Kaminari, Hagakure, Kirishima, and Uraraka. They were currently in the 1A homeroom, and there were about two more minutes before class started. Come on, man. Are you sure you didn't miss here? You do look pretty tired, and sleep deprivation can do crazy things to you, speaking from experience. That was Kirishima. Yeah, like, come on. There's no way Midoriya is the principal's son. They don't even look anything alike. Juro scoffed. Adoption is a thing, though. Kaminari thoughtfully held a hand to his chin. He soon waved it off. But Juro here is right. There's no way. Exactly. Tereki groaned and ran his hands down his face. He perked up when he saw Aizawa enter the room. Surely Aizawa sensei had heard what Izuku had said yesterday and can't beg him out. Aizawa saw Toroki's hopeful gaze on him and raised an eyebrow. 
He then looked over to Izuku, who had a Cheshire smirk on his face, and then to the small group behind Todoroki. He seemed to piece together what was going on. He crashed Todoroki's hopes with a grin and turned around, leaving Todoroki alone in his discovery. Izuku is Nezu's son, Todoroki declared, dropping his tray on the lunch table where Uraka and Ida were sitting. Not this again, Uraka groaned. Todoroki, it is very rude to go around spreading rumors like that, Ida scolded, punctuating his sentence with a few air chops. I have proof of this time. Todoroki insisted, sitting down at the table with the two. Uraka let out a sigh, resigned to her fate, and looked at Todoroki. All right, she said. Lay it on us. I saw them drinking tea and eating cheese with each other and all met in Nezu's office. Todoroki said confidently, looking at the two with an expectant gaze, as if thinking this would instantly win them over to his side. Uraka raised an eyebrow. Is that it? Todoroki sputtered. Yes, I agree with Uraraka. Having lunch in the principal's office is not concrete evidence of Midoriya's heritage. Furthermore, Izuku could have been there with All Might, seeing as the two are very close. Ida declared, causing Todoroki to deflate. Uraraka giggled. You know who she really like father to Izuku? All Might. They spend a lot of time together and I once overheard Izuku talking to him about the future lesson plan. Hey, did you say All Might? Kaminari and Ashida both walked over to the table. Because I totally agree with Uraraka, the two seem like a father and a son. Taroki groaned and slammed his head on the lunch table, feeling his soul leave his body, as the four began to talk about the similarities between All Might and Midoriya. Was this his punishment for incorrectly suspecting Midoriya was All Might's secret love child? In Edu's office, the principal of UA and his son cackled as they watched Taroki's suffering with a mildly uncomfortable yet amused All Might. Taroki glared at Izuku as the latter was regarding the former with a smug grin after another failed attempt of Taroki, insisting once again that Izuku was Nezu's son. Sometimes, he really disliked the green-haired menace. Dedication had come to Taroki on a Friday night, in the form of Kaminari running into his room, eyes wide. Midori, I, I thought you were joking! Kaminari explained, pulling at his hair. What? Taroki asked, sitting up straight quickly. What was happening? Did Midoriya slip up? Midoriya called Nezu dad! I should have wailed from behind Kaminari, flopping onto the floor. The little rat, no, not Nezu, had been found out. As it turns out, only Kaminari, Ashido, Takoyami, Koda, Jo, Hagakure, and Bakugo had been present at the reveal. As such, Yair Rozu had called everyone down so Midoriya could either confirm or deny the rumors and clear the air. Taroki was vibrating in his seat. Even if Izuku denied it, Taroki now had seven people to back him up, and with their combined efforts, surely they would reveal the truth to the rest of 1A. Midoriya, what is your answer? Eirozu asked the green haired teen politely. Midoriya was silent, and for a second Taroki thought he was going to deny it. But then, Midoriya looked up, grinning mischievously. Am I a normal student here? A teacher student? Or three mice in a trench coat? The answer is... I'm the principal son, but you can call me Izuku. So that was No One Will Ever Believe You by Blue Underscore Obsidian. I hope you liked it. Uh, leave a comment and bye bye.